begin. Uh, it's 9.20. This uh, session is a basic Chrome cover. I'll, I'll cover the Chrome browser specifically. My name is Rob Covey. I'm an IT resource teacher from the Walling for Public Schools. I'm one of the people who got together with Ian to set up uh, the conference uh, today. It started off as Ian and I in a room talking about Chromebooks and <laughs> Chrome browsers and so forth. Everything that I actually uh, present today as I move on uh, now and, and continue with my introduction will be on this Google slideshow. And there's the QR code. You could snap that with your phone or even put in the, uh, the URL there. If you were to write down this URL, we are being recorded. The folks from Discover Video and Wallingford as well have been gracious uh, enough to come down and help us out today and they're recording us and actually streaming us live as well. And you'll be able to get to that and you can get to my slides and so forth. And then later on, once I get the video, I'll put a link in this slideshow to the video. So you'll be able to come back to this, see the slides, and you also have a link to the video when I get that done. I'll put the link to it uh, later on once we're, we're done. So, like I, I said, this was going to be my Chrome experience. It's about the Chrome browser. In the Wallingford Public Schools, we've been really pushing out with Google Apps for education and Chromebooks. And one of the struggles and one of the things I hear from a lot of people when I say to them, well, you really want to use the Chrome browser, they're making this switch from things like Internet Explorer or Microsoft uh, or Firefox, Internet Explorer or Firefox, and, and when I say to them, oh, you have to use Chrome, they're a little bit foreign to that idea. So what this workshop is, kind of an introduction to uh, Chrome, and I wanted to lead you through my transition to being a Chrome fanatic. I absolutely love it. It's the only browser I use. It's the best browser for Google Apps for Education, and hopefully, this could end up be, uh, being you because once I went through this whole process, that little dog, is that's, that's me, I feel like Chrome has uh, changed my, my workflow. So I started using Chrome because people told me, wow, it's a, hey, it's a fast browser, which is true. It loads very fast. It's, it, it browses and surfs the internet very quickly. So I started using Chrome and checking it out for that. Then I really did start to see and understand the benefits of its uses with Google Apps for Education. There are features that you will find when using the Chrome browser that if you're using another internet browser um, to use Google Apps, they won't be there. For example, when you want to upload files into Google Drive in Chrome, you have the option to upload entire folders of files, and that's not an option in other browsers. So that's just an, one example. So fast browser was wonderful, a better experience. Then I started to add some apps, and I was like, well, this is great. These apps are fun or, or, or cool. But where it really started to change for me is where I started to add my multiple accounts, because I have a wallingfordschools.org account, and I have a Gmail account. And I didn't want to change or try and merge the two. I wanted to keep them separate. So once I added the two accounts, that was fantastic. And I really like how easy it is to flip between the two accounts, because that's another question I always get from people in Wallingford. What about my Gmail account? Because when we're moving them into the wallingfordschools.org account, they only want to know, well, how do I manage the two? And I keep them completely separate and just manage multiple accounts using the Chrome browser. And now that I'm completely in there with my multiple accounts and all my extensions and all my uh, apps and everything, my entire world is shared everywhere. So I could be at my computer at work, and I could easily click, and I could see my browsing history 
from my Chrome browser at home. I could be on my phone and I could browse and everything is synced and shared everywhere. And I have this smooth workflow no matter where I am. And I could just go right to your laptop, open Chrome and log into Chrome and connect with my accounts and all my bookmarks, all my browsing history, all my apps, all my extensions, all my things are going to be there, which is great in our world where one day we have a teacher's laptop that's working fine, it crashes, IT comes up, they clone it, and then they're like, oh, all the stuff I had bookmarks on there and so forth. So um, I think I double clicked. Uh, some of the things I just want to talk about is the Omnibox. I'm going to talk a little bit about tabs, bookmarking, extensions uh, in the Chrome browser, apps in the Chrome browser, and then ultimately in the end, uh, the multiple accounts just to throw at you kinds of things that you can do in Chrome. Now, the Omnibox is the top of the screen. It's the address bar, which you would call the address bar in a lot of the browsers. And according to Google, there are still, while Chrome is becoming the number one browser, or is the number one browser now, their statistics are showing that people still aren't making complete use of the Omnibox. And what it is, is not just where you would put www.google.com, it is the search box. It searches right to Google, and it's powered by Google Suggest. So as soon as you start typing, it auto-completes, and it'll search your history. So I put New York, like, and I was when I did the screenshot thinking I want to put in New York Times and that actually is exactly what it auto completed as but then you could see that being a Yankee fan I was checking out scores on Yahoo Sports schedule and so forth so New York Yankees is coming up from my history they were wondering from a Google search whether I might want New York Post the New York Times is there so it auto completes and, and it's quick so you could do Google searches and it'll search your history and connect right from that Omnibox on the top of the screen. Another reason why I like the Chrome browser, the Omnibox, I never have to open a new window and go to google.com or, or search or click buttons and so forth. It's, it's very easy. It's right up there. The other thing is I like uh, are tabs in the browser. And a lot of people might say, well, so what? Every browser has tabs. But I like some of the features that Google allows you in the tabs. For example, is pinning the tabs. So when I start in the beginning of the day, I actually have tabs that are bookmarked. And I'll show you that a little uh, later as well. And I could go bookmark, open my bookmark tabs, and all my tabs will come up. And one of them that I then right click on, on a tab, it'll say, do you want to pin it? And it'll bring it over, and it'll make it short. So this is a pin tab, and that's a pin tab. And I leave my my Gmail, and this is my school Outlook mail, and I leave those open there so I could easily flip uh, to them later. And when they are open through my Outlook mail for my school mail, because I actually have three mails that I'm looking at all the time, um, it'll ring, and I could just click that, and my mail is always open there. And then right from there, there's whatever browser tabs are there. You can take, you can move them, you could re -ignore, uh, reorganize them. And like I said, if you right-click on these tabs, you can bookmark all your tabs. So if there's certain pages that you always open up every day, you could bookmark all your tabs into one little link. You click it and you say, just open all bookmarks, and your day starts off. And it's a great way at the end of the day. You might be in the middle of something, you want to close down, bookmark everything you were working on and save it into one little place. I love that about the, the Google Chrome browser as well. So this is just a screenshot. It shows you having these open. If I right-click on it, you get this option where it says bookmark all tabs. Uh, so that's basically how you would do that. And if you notice, it also that's where the, when you right-click on the tabs, you get the pin tab. And when you pin it, it'll zip over here and it'll be short. And it doesn't have the little X on it, so you actually have to click on it and click the X uh, if you want to close a, a pin tab. Uh, bookmarks. The best part about there is that they're shared everywhere. Of course, every browser has bookmarks, but they get shared typically locally on the machine. When you're in the Chrome experience, it gets linked to your Chrome your uh, account. And you could very quickly just hit the star there and then immediately add the bookmark. And you could decide where you want it on the bookmarks bar or another folder and, and so forth. So the big thing about the bookmarks is that they're shared across all your uh, devices. Now, the other thing that I really like is all the little apps and extensions. When you add extensions to your Chrome browser, 
that's where um, they'll come up here as little uh, icons next to the address Omnibox right there. And so these are a bunch of extensions that I have. You may recognize this screen when you open a new tab in Chrome and it gives you the links to Google Drive and so forth. It's important to realize that some of these things that are on the screen are not necessarily apps, but they could be links that take you right back, a link right to Google Drive or a link right to Google Search. But like this one here, Webcam Toy, is actually an application that runs right in the browser. And Webcam Toy will actually use the webcam that's in your computer or Chromebook and allow you to uh, take snapshots and video uh, there. Moving right along. Um, where do you get the apps? Very easily in the Chrome browser. Uh, the, the store, there's two links in there. You go to the store, you search through, there's all kinds of free uh, applications and extensions there for you to add into the browser. And again, here's a few more on the screen that uh, might uh, be making it out there. <clears throat> One of the things that um, on this particular, on the bottom in Chrome, it, it has your history. So if you look, I have, uh, this would be most sites visited, my apps. I have multiple pages of apps, so I could scroll through them. The history for other devices is there. If I were to click on this as a screenshot, but if I were to click on that, it'll bring up my other computers, and right there it'll, I can actually see my latest browsing uh, history there as well. If you're using a Chromebook, it's important the screen is slightly different. The uh, screens I were sho was showing you already were from the Chrome browser on a, on a PC or a Mac. This little Rubik's Cube icon in the bottom is where you would open your apps because when you open new tabs in the, on the Chromebook it doesn't. And there are more apps that are actually right there on the Chromebook that are not on uh, in the PC browser. One of those on this particular screenshot is that Files app um, where you can save locally on the Chromebook. That's one of the the things that people always say about Chromebooks, one of the myths is, well, you can't save anything on the Chromebook. Of course, you wouldn't necessarily need to. You put things out in the cloud, but that Files app allows you to save things locally on the Chromebook. When you do screenshots on the Chromebook, it goes locally onto the Chromebook, and then you could use apps to open them up and edit them um, and so forth. Okay, at this time I was going to just go through some of the apps that I have uh, and uh, use and, or, and extensions, and I want to talk about them. I've, I've installed a quick uh, um, screen capture app. So it's great when you're doing things and you want to capture a screen to put right into uh, the presentation. Another app that you are, or these are extensions, excuse me, uh, screen capture uh, extension is Clearly. I know, Elaine, you were asking me in the beginning about, you know, web pages that um, have a lot of stuff on the side. So if I were, for example, to just, I'll just show you that clearly because I'm gonna, I was at the New York Times. I was reading this article here. If I then click the clearly, it's, it's part of Evernote. And it allows me, it clears off all the other stuff on the side. So basically, it's just the article, all the extra stuff that's on. And it's just an extension in the browser that clicks it over, and it gives me options to send it to Evernote and do other things as well. The next extension I have on there, which is one of my favorites, I've been playing around with it mostly this summer, is, um, is the next one, which is PicMonkey. One of the things that people would always say to me is like, well, well, you know, the art teachers, they use Photoshop and so forth, and you can't edit, you're not going to be editing photographs and so forth. Well, PicMonkey does a, a, a great job of finding pictures that are right there on, these are all the pictures that happen to be on this, on this web page that I just opened at National Geographic. And then when you open PicMonkey, you can go right to that. So I just click that browser extension, and then it gives me, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to crop it? Do you want to rotate, play with the exposure, colors, sharpen? And it allows you to edit it right there in the browser. 
Again, this is why I just start to love Chrome because my whole world and all my accounts and everything have gotten right in there. Is there any uh, legal reason why you can't do that on some of these pictures? Well, you always have to be aware of uh, copyright and so forth. Um, but if you are editing and changing photographs or using them as part of something else, uh, th then also the some of that changes as well. But you should always be aware of copyright and so forth. I have um, a Picasa link, so that links from a program on my PC. So when I'm doing like a Google site and I want to do a photo sli slideshow in the site from Picasa, this is the Google Mail Checker. It checks my mail and it gives me little numbers up there. It tells me if I have new mail so I don't have to necessarily go over or if I'm not in front of the computer when a new mail comes in. Uh, the next one is a search all extension and actually searches Google, Bing, Amazon, eBay, uh, and a whole bunch of different places. Uh, a Google dictionary, so I could click on a word right on the screen and it'll define it. And with all the apps and stuff that I do have on there, I have this thing called App Jump. And, um, okay, and I must not have grouped them. I thought that I had them all grouped in my school account. In my other account, they're all grouped, and I have them grouped by apps that do pictures, apps that do math, apps that are English, apps that are different subject areas so that I could quickly and uh, sort them. So, for example, if I want to make a new category here, I could just... Uh, group my apps you know, add, if I want to add this math equation editor which is a good app for I could just qu quickly make a new category here and then when I w was on the app launcher I could click math and it'll show me things that I've grouped into that uh, this one's pretty good for, uh, okay, because I'm on an app jump. There we go. Um, readability, read now. You could send it to your Kindle and so forth. Save for read later. It's a, a cool little app. Some of these for resizing and shaping windows I use when I have more than one window open. Code Academy for coding, there's an extension for right into the browser. So those are just some of my uh, app extensions. For apps that I've been playing around, graphing calculators, GeoGebra for math. Um, one of the other things that people say with Chromebooks, oh, well, there's no good without an internet connection, but there's apps for Gmail offline or Drive offline or Calendar. Uh, offline as well. well. If you wanted to edit video, we video, you can actually edit video on the Chromebook. Uh, Murally is pretty cool. It allows you to make photo murals or uh, murals with uh, internet links, uh, all different kinds of content. And uh, just as we're cruising along, I think, where are we at? Okay, I heard a lot of noise. We still have enough time. Um, Pixlr Editor is a great photo editor. It does a lot of um, great little photo editing. So you could check that out. It's a, it's a great app. Let's see. This is another one of my favorites as the IT person helping people is the Chrome Remote Desktop. So it will allow me to remote into any person's Chromebook. They basically open, uh, and this is, with Chromebooks in the Google Apps domain, we, can man we manage them all. Uh, so this is an app that I pushed out onto all our district Chromebooks. So that every single person will already have it on their Chromebook. And they click on that app, it'll open it up, and it says, do you want to share your screen? They click share their screen, and it gives you a little code that I could be on the phone or whatever with the person, and it'll give you a number right here that you just give to that person and say, okay, well, just 330-4025-3423, and I type that in on my end, and then we're sharing screens.
One of the other real cool things about the Chrome remote desktop is I could be on a Chromebook and I could set up this laptop in my office to be hooked up with Chrome remote desktop. I can remote from my Chromebook to my laptop and I could be using Microsoft Office programs on my PC but from my Chromebook. Uh, so that's a, another way that you can access. I mean, people say, oh, you can't do Office. Well, you can do OfficeLive.com and edit uh, Office documents. You can remote into a PC or a Mac that has Office on it, and you can use it remotely right through it, right from the Chromebook. Um, so that Chrome remote desktop, I'm looking forward to this year as being a useful tool. Um, and then there's uh, one of the other things that I heard from people is like, well, you can't put uh, all those tech ed courses, the CAD courses. Well, there's a free AutoCAD 360 app as well. Uh, and I haven't really played around. I don't do a lot with AutoCAD, but I did um, check it out just kind of to dispel some of the myths that we hear from people when we're pushing out the Chromebooks and we have some of our staunch supporters of PCs or other devices. Um, on to the multiple accounts. I mentioned to you before that I have multiple accounts uh, set up. In the top of the browser, and it could be in a couple different places, if you don't have the little icon in the top, sometimes it's just a gray face when you first set up, um, you can click that. If it's not there, if you go to uh, the settings link, the hot dog link as some people call it, over on the side, you can also go in and add, go into uh, settings and add another user. And when you set uh, and add another user, if I click here, you can, I can see that I have other uh, users. So I have my school account here, and I could easily just flip over to my Gmail, which is my personal account. And then all, if you notice, the apps changed. <laughs> that easily because I have different apps I play around. My personal account, I have some games and stuff on there. So playing around with uh, different things there. And uh, I could easily just that easily flip from one account to the other. And then when I hit the, once I'm in there with that icon up here, which is my little black ninja guy, he's up there. I could click my mail or drive and it's going to show me all the information from that, that account here. Does anybody have any uh, questions so far as I'm moving quickly uh, just through some of these things? No questions. Okay, well, uh, depending on your school system, I know in the Wallingford Public School System, until July, uh, we did not have it set up for an online uh, non-Java gradebook, but we just made that change this summer. So this coming school year, we should be able because... Okay, uh, the, yeah, for the video. The, the question was uh, Chromebooks not being able to use PowerTeacher Gradebook. The PowerTeacher Gradebook runs JavaScript, so it runs an a uh, extra applet, and it doesn't, didn't work on the Chromebook. That was one of the other deterrents that people said, well, we give teachers Chromebooks and they can't do their gradebook. Well, this summer in Wallingford, I know, we just switched to a non-Java-based gradebook. Uh, so, because they were having problems with uh, iPads or Apple Mac computers with it anyway, so uh, Pearson made the switch, and that is available as an update, and we just updated in Wallingford. So, if you were trying to use your gradebook with a Chromebook this fall, we should be able to do that now, which uh, is exciting. And I think you start, you're starting to see the trend where a lot of people are, are shifting applications so that they can be accessed web only. Uh, we were using Lexia and Symphony and those have all gone to a web based where before we used to have little applets, uh, little software that we had to install and now they're all going web based. Because uh, whether connection speeds are speeding up in schools and Wi-Fi is more available and it just makes our lives a lot easier. I know from my perspective and support we were constantly having a problem with someone switching devices or computers or whether the software was there or not. And 
as long as they can get on the internet knowing they can get to those things, it's uh, great. When you say in, to, in here, where? In um, Chromebook. Oh, it, it, YouTube works. Uh, the question was, how does YouTube work on the Chromebook? And it, it works works it's great with, yeah. without a problem. Yeah. It all depends on your, your uh, wireless or Internet connection, if you have a bad Internet connection. Because I was in a school in our district that we were having some <coughs> connectivity issues, but it wasn't the Chromebook's issue at all. And... Um, it just connects right to uh, YouTube. YouTube. Google uh, bought YouTube, so uh, it's all designed to go right together. Yeah, because on my laptop, it's always like buffering. Down. It could be your laptop, maybe. But I haven't had any problems on the, on the Chromebook. Another app I, I'm looking here that I didn't say, Voice Comments. It's another uh, cool little app. When you're using Google Docs, if you're working with your students and you want to leave voice comments on the doc, uh, the voice comment app allows you to do that. So instead of just leaving text comments, you can leave a message for your student. You know, great work. You did a great job. I really love what you did here. Uh, try, try and work on this, et cetera. And it could be a voice comment. The Twisted Wave is an audio recording, kind of like an Audacity type uh, program. So for podcasting and audio recordings. And like I said, all these are all Chrome and the Chrome browser, so whether you're on a PC or a Mac or on the Chromebook, all these apps are available, and some of the ones that I just showed you, um, like voice comments, Twisted Wave for audio podcasting, um, editing photographs. This has been a, a great one because I was, before I discovered PicMonkey and Pixlr, when I was doing some workshops with Google Sites, Everybody would be trying to find some graphics, and they were too big or too large, or they only wanted a part of it. And um, now there's all kinds of editability and so forth. I've used the PicMonkey to take my screenshots and then edit and change them a little bit uh, as well. So I take one screenshot, but on one screen I only want part of it, so I don't have to take all these multiple screenshots. I would just edit them right there in uh, PicMonkey. Voice Comments app, yes, is one. Uh, it's an app. It's in the web store. If you search for Voice Comments, the Voice Comments app allows you to uh, add voice comments to things like Google Docs. And all of the apps are free? Yes, every one of the ones I've mentioned today are all free. <clears throat> some of them, you, you could be fooled a little bit at first because some of them will say it's free. And then once you install them, they'll tell you that you have 30 days, and then they want you to upgrade or to create an account. Uh, but then you could just delete them at that point if you don't want to pay, or you could see what they. Does the voice comments also work with just images, or just Google Docs, or just uh, documents? Uh, when you say just images, what do you mean? If you were doing just slides, or let's say it's the art show, and you've got images. Are the slides in like a Google presentation, or or where, where are you want to do add voice comments to like a web or make a slideshow? You're making a slideshow, let's say. Uh, I haven't done used it a lot for that. Uh, I haven't. But would that be an appropriate app for that? Oh, anything anything that's uh, positive and working, yeah, oh. <laughs> is appropriate. Oh, this is one I just found yesterday. And uh, because I was looking for other options for Microsoft, and Live Documents was something I found on the Internet and uh, as in a way to use uh, Chrome to work with Microsoft. And I just downloaded it yesterday, so... Uh, it's a good question. So the question was asking about that Live Documents app. I just uh, found it while I was browsing th through some things yesterday, and I clicked on it. So I have no familiarity with it at all, but it's supposed to somehow be working with uh, for 
Excel, Word, PowerPoint documents uh, in the Chrome experience. So that's, that's new. So if you want to try that, that was actually on the, the, the slideshow. I threw that in as a last for my other slideshow that I was going to do later that was going to talk more just about the actual Chromebooks themselves. Absolutely. A Picasso question, yeah, okay. So the way I've been doing it is I you know, plug my camera in and I um, download the photographs to my laptop where they reside and then I upload them to Picasso web, web albums. Web yeah. So you skip the whole like, resi you know, putting the, the pictures onto this Chromebook laptop, right? Right, it skips, yeah. It goes just directly to... Yeah, when you use Picasso, it'll just go out to Picasso web album and then you can link to those web albums using Picasso that way, yeah. Yep. Any other questions? On the Chromebook, so I like this idea of the voice comment. But there's also a camera. But the camera's showing me. How do I get the camera out there, do you know? Uh, well, th one of those uh, little apps, is the web toy, you could turn it around. The Chromebook has only the forward facing. It faces the user. But kids, have been, I've seen them creative. They pick them up and record what they just hold them up that way. It works. <coughs> I mean, on some, like, tablets or phones, you could flip the camera because it has a camera on both sides. These, uh, most of the Chromebooks... Depending on the models, they don't have that. The ones we have in our district only have the user-facing cameras. So we have the, the Samsung models like this. I'm gonna, can I steal this for a second? Mm -hmm. So this is the model that we have in our district. I know some of them are on, I don't know, have the Lenovo, yeah. the super ones. These are on the cart. We'll see how these go, how, uh, how it works out. We had, we had a bunch in the Sheehan Library, the Sheehan High School Library this year. And we didn't have any problems with them. They were kind of a sign out, bring back, return, and we didn't have a problem with them. We are, we're not in the place where we're saying, here you go, you can keep it with you, or it's a sign out uh, off a cart, take off the cart with the teacher, and you know, see where we can go with those. Is there a normal app, like Sendo or Keystone or something that you can talk? Uh, well, Google's have hang Hangouts, uh, and that's where you can actually, and that the Hangouts are part of the Google Plus. And you can talk face to face, and and then you also uh, uh, can do a lot of other things with the, within the Google Plus. But I know their policies are for for students is I think 13 and older uh, for Google Plus, which that's what Ian was mentioning uh, Google Plus, and he was joking with the kids. So he said, "Well, you could find out about that later," <laughs> um, because there is a policy 13 and over for Google Plus. So we have it turned off uh, right now in our, our district at this point to for anybody below the high school. We haven't had a lot of students in there and setting it up and trying to use it. But there was just on the Google Plus, which I, I have to read about just last week, there is an upgrade that I found really intriguing because on the Google Plus app on my phone, when it was upgrading and I saw what's new, there's new support for dom domains which I need to find out about whether that means we can limit our Google Plus use to say that only people within our app's domain, that's the only people that can you can communicate with with Google Plus, which could be great to uh, allay the fears that a lot of people have because right now Google Plus, when you go there, it, it's public and it's out there. Um, so there was, when I clicked the link to see what's new in the update on Google Plus, it said support for domain, uh, for domains, which could be really interesting. All right, I think that's uh, our 35 minutes, right? So, oh, absolutely. Oh, that's the wrong one. Wrong one. Oh, I closed the whole thing. So again, we'll take the video.
once I get together with the guys from Discover Video there and get the camera and we'll see what we have. We'll put the link there and you can rewatch if you want to see me again. <laughs> All right, and then later today I'm going to do one that's